Jerry, the D-Lab, and today I'm doing an initial inspection on a Johnson Viking 2 transmitter that was brought up here from a fellow ham radio operator. He says this thing hasn't been on in probably 10 years, and he's pretty sure it doesn't work. So we'll give it an initial inspection, and I'll fire it up, see what's going on with it. First off, let's give it just a cosmetic inspection, okay? VFO is a little bit grubby, but the switches work, and the tuning is smooth. So that's a good sign. The Viking 2 itself has some battle scars. It's been around a while, but all the knobs are original. They got a little dust on them. The thing I noticed is the mic jack is a two-pin type, so push to talk has been installed. So the question is, how much voltage is that switching? Let's take a look in the top. All right, top side, all the tubes are installed. So that's a good thing. A little bit dirty. This is a kit because it does not have the little sticker down between the two rectifier tubes. It's got this beautiful gigantic blue resistor right here. And I'm guessing that's probably the modulation current adjustment but I don't know why it's got two taps. That's kind of strange, okay? So we're gonna have to take a look underneath, see if we can figure that out. So let's flip her over and take a look. All right, we're bottom side now. I see a lot of stuff going on here. First thing that caught my eye were these crazy caps that have been added in front of the filter cap and they look like they shoot down here into the modulator tubes. I have no idea what's going on there. Somebody has replaced the low voltage filter caps, which is fine. It's kind of strange how they did it, but I mean, it's probably working fine. But behind here, I see, if you look down there, there's like a whole pile of ceramic disc caps and a little resistor. That's pretty cool. What's going on there, huh? Here's another dual cap, been replaced. The choke, I believe, has been replaced because it's missing a screw and there's a wire nut going to it. All right, over here it appears as though the AC cord has been replaced. Got some electrical tape on the VFO cable coming in which goes to a capacitor off the ground and there's also some other kind of magic going on here. I think somebody is trying to slide the frequency around on it. Over here I noticed a couple of resistoroids here. There's like three of them in series. Got a little hanging pigtail here. Pretty neat stuff. Now if you go over here, there's that push to talk relay that's been added and it appears as though it has a 28 volt DC coil. These resistors are not original. That big resistor on top, the modulation adjustment, that used to sit here, right? So I'm going to try to bring this thing back to original. Now down here in the um, modulation preamp section, you can see there's been a little bit of work there. That doesn't look too bad. It's got the original interstage transformer feeding the 807s and somebody replaced these 100 ohm resistors that are normally out of tolerance. So all in all, I believe it's safe to turn it on. So let's fire it up. Here we go, initial power up of the Viking 2. At this point, I've just turned on the filaments, high voltage is off. But what I'm real interested in seeing before I hook up my microphone to this thing is how much voltage is on that push to talk relay. I expect to see 28 volts, right? Because that's what the coil's rated at. So let's see what we got. Yeah, about 97 volts. So I'm not gonna hook my microphone up to that, I'll tell you that right now. So we'll do all of our testing without the mic, unfortunately. But at least I can see if we have plate voltage, grid, modulation current, etc. Right? So I got Dum Dum set up here. So we will go through the tuning. There's my VFO. This switch is a little dirty. 
but at least it appears as though the VFO is working. Maybe not. Because I didn't even have it turned on. How do you like that? Let's try that again. Alright, so we're on 80 meters. My VFO is there about 3.8 megahertz. There is some activity here. I would say that's good. Let's go to buffer. Peek it. We are grid. So you can get any grid. Oh, look at there. Excellent. So we have grid drive. Now the most important thing, plate. So let me cut so you can see this meter. We're getting ready to apply plate voltage. So my coupling's at 260 meters out. We're on 80 meter band. We have grid. So here we go. Flip the plate. Should be somewhere down here. Here we go. There it is. You guys are seeing this live. A little over 100 watts. Pretty smooth. Excellent. Now, the real question. What is the modulator bias sitting at? Ooh. Oh, it's because I'm not a phone. Boy, you guys have seen all my mistakes. So, around uh, 30 milliamps of modulation current. That's a good sign it's not dead. But I'm really not a big fan of that monster resistor on top. And I'm sure not a fan of 100 volts sitting on that connector. Alright, well what the heck. Let's hook up a mic and give it a shot. So I'm going to hook up my microphone using my wife's gardening glove. So I don't get blasted by that voltage if it gets away from me. Okay. And I saw smoke coming off. It's just dirt. That's great. There's plenty of dirt on this thing already. All right. So we are connected. Let's see if push to talk works. Yep. Look at there. Okay. Give it some audio. See if we can get anything out of it. Look at there. It's actually working, guys. I bet you it sounds great. Pretty much. We have to fix the push to talk, make that safe, swing the modulation resistor back underneath where it should be, give this thing a clean up, and I bet you it'll work great. Let's well, say Robert Mondavi and I did a great job on that initial inspection of the Johnson Viking 2 transmitter. So there will be a follow up video, obviously. I'll show the new push to talk system and the reinstallation of the proper modulation resistor and we'll give this guy another test and then it'll probably work better and it'll be safer. We'll see you again.